Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about damage control surgery. So in this trauma is a triad of death which includes coagulopathy, hypothermia and metabolic acidosis. First, damage controlled surgery. The main aim is to blunt the physiological response to prolonged shock. So this is, so whenever so what we are doing here is in damage control surgery whenever the person person has a uh, hemorrhage leading to that had led to hemodynamic shock or any surgery sir anything that has resulted in unstableness in his body okay the baby is sorry the, the patient is hemodynamically unstable the reason for that unstableness can be anything so in order to make sure that the unstableness in our body has been released okay, in order to you are not treating the primary pathology you are just uh, going into I mean you are just exploring the body and then you will exploring the abdomen if it is if you, will, if, if you do it in abdomen you will just explore the abdomen and you will see whether there is any hemorrhage or contamination or if there is any necrotic tissue if there is any you will remove it but you are not going to remove the primary pathology so that is what is seen in damage controlled surgery. So this is an abbreviated laparotomy. We can do temporary packing is done and we will close the abdomen. Why do we do damage control surgery? It is done to prevent long duration surgeries. Exacer this long duration surgery will cause increased hypotension, um, coagulopathy and metabolic acidosis which can lead to death. So in order to prevent these and in order to prevent the long term surgery we have started doing damage control surgery. The phases of damage control surgery include first there is initial exploration is done in initial exploration is done and we will rapidly control the hemorrhage and contamination and packing of four quadrants is done then we will do perforation we will see the perforation and if there is any perforation we will close the perforation second secondary resuscitation phase two in phase two uh, the surgery is done we are closing the abdomen okay and now we will shift the patient to the icu and then we will do secondary resuscitation this is done for almost 48 hours and we will correct the hypothermia coagulopathy and metabolic acidosis which were due to the injury now then in phase 3 we do definitive operation the planned re-exploration is done and here we will definitively repair the injury and we do stapled resection should be done then these stages we can say stages of damaged control surgery these are of five stages stage one patient selection stage two operative control of hemorrhage and contamination stage two operative control of hemorrhage and contamination stage three there will be icu resuscitation after control of hemorrhage and contamination you will do icu resuscitation in stage three in stage four definitive surgery is done and in stage five abdominal closure is done so these are the steps of damage controlled surgery then then if you see the next important thing is about the abdominal compartment syndrome which we will learn in our next class thank you for watching